Bed Bath & Beyond stores could soon return. Yay! Uh, according to Retail Dive, Kirkland's Home and Beyond have entered a strategic partnership that includes the pilot opening of up to five neighborhood small format Bed Bath & Beyond stores, the company said Monday. You won't need the whole Saturday to go to Bed Bath & Beyond, Home Depot, and others. You will just need a short <laughs> amount of time because they're just tiny little cute Bed Bath & Beyonds. Good uh, Fred to Kirk- take reference, Anne. Yes. Nice. Subtle. Kirkland's, Kirkland's is beyond... Beyond's exclusive operator and licensee for the new stores, Bed Bath and Beyond Shop and Shops may also be opened inside of Kirkland's locations, but that's yet to be determined. Uh, Beyond is providing $17 million in debt financing to Kirkland's under the deal's financial terms. Eight and a half million of that is a convertible note that will convert to Kirkland's common stock at $1.85 per share upon stockholder approval. Beyond will also buy $8 million of Kirkland stock in a subscription agreement. The company's also entered a seven-year collaboration agreement. Uh, Starting in Q1 of 2025, Beyond will earn a collaboration fee equal to 0.25% on all of Kirkland's quarterly retail and e-commerce revenue, an incentive fee equal to 1.5% of Kirkland's incremental growth in e-commerce revenue, and a trademark license agreement where Beyond will earn a store royalty fee equal to 3% of net store sales generated under the Bed Bath & Beyond banner. Uh, I hope you were taking notes there. There was a lot of data that I just threw out you. Um, but my question is simpler. Does the market need a smaller incarnation of Bed Bath & Beyond, or is this an example of two wrongs that won't likely make a right? If you step back and think about what Beyond is trying to do here, right, which is trying to have a broader play in home, home improvement, home services, decor, furniture, I think that makes sense, right? Zulili, they they have bought you know Bed Bath & Beyond, the, the IP of it, overstock, and now they are forging a partnership with Container Store. So they're moving more towards this home, centered around home concept, right? And Marcus is a is a, is a a phenomenally well-proven leader. So he has a plan to execute against it. Now, it's a small test that they are trying to get into. May likely be that Kirkland's is not penetrated as much in the brick and mortar space as opposed to online. Probably their sales are a lot more lopsided towards online and e-commerce, especially coming out of COVID. And I mean, they have about $60 million in sales, net sales, and you know, likely the revenue is going to be, you know, they are expecting probably the vicinity of 200 to 500 range in terms of revenue from a store from this particular format, which okay. is not huge expectation, right? From a small tightly controlled and well-placed retail location. That's the key, right? If they put it in the right set of semi-urban, highly populated strip mall location, then you have low labor, low rentals, low leases. So it has some legs, right? If you have, you can make the economics work. But Bath & Beyond still has a wonderful brand recall, right? But it's it's a more, you know, promotion-oriented, coupons, discounts, markdowns, right? So they'll have to price it properly. The biggest thing that led to chapter 11 for Bed Bath & Beyond was that the costs were not in control. And a lot of the merchandise choices that were made were competing with the national brands and with Target and with Walmart, especially in the home improvement category, home improvement and decor. And now this is a very particular category furniture that they can probably reach more, lean more into and have very clear merchandising, supply chain, procurement, cogs, Mm. gross margin play from Kirkland that they probably have a good team already in place and they can lift and shift. So if you read the press release, Marcus is very clearly pointing that out that they have a proven track record and he has confidence in the leadership team. So I think if you tie all this together, I think there is something here that they can start this experiment in a small format and then assess. And I believe that the right location and the right investments will likely be, will help them shape this strategy and the pilots. Okay. All right. Chris Kreitz, what do you say about this? 
I'm going to go off on the rails here and just go a, a totally different direction and answer a different Oh, question. boy. I, I think the whole history of Beyond is so, in, the new Beyond is so interesting, right? Yeah. So they buy the Bed Bath & Beyond IP for $20 million, right? Then they buy, they close overstock.com. They've now reopened overstock.com. They did a $40 million deal with the container store. They did this $17 million deal with Kirkland's. They said, we're never going to open physical retail stores again. A year later, they've opened physical retail stores again. And at, at the, the, from the outside, it looks like the most scattered retailing strategy you can possibly imagine. Uh, and then like, you know, just dumping money into, you know, failing brands or, or struggling brands. Uh, if I step back and say it's, you know, it's either a very scattered strategy or there's something brilliant going on here. I thought Lachman had a really good point, right? Like the Beyond brand has extremely high rankings on search and customer recall. They know the name, right? So one of the things that's interesting in all the releases of the deals that they've done with Kirkland's, with the container store, there's like a small snippet that's hidden in where they say, um, all the companies are going to join Beyond's customer data, global data platform, mm -hmm. which means my, my curiosity is, are they just making these investments to get access to the customer lists to, to Lakshman's point to use their brand recall and search prominence to be able to funnel customers towards these brands? Like, I, I think it could be overall just a large marketing play. Um, the other interesting piece is they all say that they're going to adopt the loyalty program and then it looks like they're going to start selling um, payment solutions and insurance and those like ancillary financial products now that Beyond is going to own. So to me, it, it like there's there's some sort of market and data play there where they're just making these investments into smaller, you know, in decline retailers that used to have billion dollars of sales. And now you have access to all of that customer data and you can figure out ways to funnel that data towards your future um, plat platform of brand. So I, I think it's really interesting from that perspective too. So it's a data play. You think Chris Walton, you, this is, this is your wheelhouse. Um, you, you worked in home furnishings for a long time with target. What do you make of this? Yeah. You I mean, I, I God, there's a lot here. I mean, I think both, both the two gentlemen before me summed it up pretty well. I mean, I mean, my biggest takeaway from this is I got to say great job, Marcus, you know, like He's doing what the entrepreneur does, which is like offloading all the risk onto two other companies. You know, mm -hmm. we brought up the container store, but in this case, you know, he's offloading it to Kirkland's like, you know, that the, basically the money's just going to float to to beyond, you know, if Kirkland's tries to do anything and, and Bed Bath Beyond doesn't even really have to do anything to make that happen. So from a, from a cash flow perspective, I got to think that's good for Beyond's business. But Net net, when I step back from it, I struggle seeing why a new, smaller incarnation of Bed Bath and Beyond is going to amount to anything because I just don't know the why. Like, what is the why in terms of why I'm going to that store over any other option? Like, I just don't get it. The space is so crowded already. Yeah. And you, you know, when I go back to like why why Bed Bath and Beyond failed initially, it's because Bed Bath and Beyond was done better by Amazon. It was all the beyond stuff that you could get now through Amazon just delivered to you. So especially with all the other competitions. So I, I, I good luck Kirkland's trying to do this. I, I think he might've gotten hoodwinked a little bit on this one. Yeah, I agree, Chris. I don't understand the new small format ones. I'm a little softer on the, um, you know, the, the collaborations, the going inside the container store, um, or going inside of a Kirkland's like, I don't hate that idea. I think that's an easy, easier thing for them to test. And they have the data, like Chris was saying, you know, collected from shoppers across the platform, what they're interested in, what people are buying in those locations. And I think the thing that we haven't talked about is from a customer perspective, I do like the potential option to use these Kirkland's locations, these container store locations as, you know, returns drop off points for these retailers. Like there, there is some benefit there, especially when you're buying home products. I think that it's just like apparel in my mind where it's like, mm -hmm. you could be trying a different color pillow or comforter or something. And so you might be ordering three or four. Like, I think that from a customer standpoint, it could be worth the test, but does it have the long-term, um, support, I think from an organizational perspective and from an ROI perspective, I, I really, I don't see that happening, but 
Yeah, and I don't know. I think like while Bed Bath & Beyond has good recall nationally as a brand, I don't see like what products are driving me into a shop and shop in either instance. Like, you know, like, oh, I'm going to go to the container store to check out Bed Bath & Beyond's what? You know, well, I mean, I think Bed, it's Bath more of Beyond's. like a a vignette. Like when you that. go into the container store, like, are you able to make purchases? Like, do you buy a rug at that same point in time? Or are there certain items that maybe make sense that, you know, it's just saving their customers a trip, but brands, brands don't matter in home furnishings though. Like we've talked about what people care about is yeah. the style design and the quality of the product. So the brands of home furnishings are almost obsolete at this point, you know? So 